Hello everybody, welcome back to Sierra's National Channel and welcome to a new video. So this week I'm very excited. I have had this video planned for like a month. I planned it out in December. At the beginning of the year we're going to start it out with a bang. This week I am going to take you along with me and we are going to be doing a reading vlog and we are going to be reading none other than Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nunn. This is Girls of Paper Fire number three. You all know I did a reading vlog for the first video, the first book. I um, loved it. I will link that up in the cards if you want to watch that video. I unfortunately did not do a reading vlog when I read Girls of Storm and Shadow, which is book number two. But yeah, when I saw that book three was released in November 2021, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy it and I have to do a reading vlog for it. Um, so here we are. That is what we're doing this week. First week of January. Happy New Year. It's 2022. How crazy is that? As for current day Sierra, who is recording this, this is January 3rd. Um, I actually, it's about midday. It's almost 3 p.m. Um, I started my day out today with some yoga with Adrian. She's doing her annual um, first of the year yoga 30 day yoga challenge so I am moving I'm participating in that it's move the theme is move this year so I started my day out with that but yeah current day Sierra is feeling a little bit scattered brain because I flew in yesterday which was Sunday and my term started today so school's back in session and work is back in session I have to go to work in 30 minutes so I just feel like today has been quite a rush today so I'm looking forward to after work just like sitting down and reading I am both very excited to read Girls of Storm and Shadow, but also, no, wrong one, wrong one. I'm gonna keep saying the wrong book titles this entire video, aren't I? I'm both very excited to read Girls of Fate and Fury, but also very full of dread because I just have this gut feeling that Natasha Nung is going to like rip my heart out of my chest with this last final book. And like, if anything happens to Lei or Ren in this book, I just, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to process and like move on with my life. So like, I am hoping for the best, but I also don't have high hopes at the same time. Completely contradictory, but that is how I feel going into this. I am about to head to work, and then after work I'm going to run uh, to the town over to Target to do some um, grocery shopping, some general errands, and then we're going to come home and finally take a breath, and I'll just sit down and I will be reading, and then um, I will have an update for you probably first thing tomorrow morning. So yeah, let's go. to get to class and it's a 20 minute walk so I'm about to run myself out of the door but I just finished getting ready um and I just wanted to give a quick little update for the day so I'm about to go to my first class of my winter term my final year of college and I'm very excited it's like an introduction to sociology class and I got ready um I really like this little sweater vest that I got going on here 
Um, and yeah, so far the plan for the day is to go to this class and then go to work and then go to my other class for the day and then I'm done by four. So I'm gonna chill out and read some more of Girls of Fate and Fury. I got the name right this time. Um, last night I got to page 74, I believe. I mapped this out so that I have to read, I think 70 pages a day to be done by Saturday. So I have enough time to edit and upload this vlog on Sunday. We just started to see um, how this is all gonna come together, like how Lei and Ren are going to be reunited in this plot. So I'm just like, Ah, you guys saw my reactions last night. I'm just so excited to see how this turns out, but I'm also really nervous as I keep saying, so we'll just see how it turns out. But for now, I'm about to go to class and I will talk to you all a little bit later. flying by way faster than I gave it credit for, but that's fine. We're gonna persevere and we're gonna keep going. So before I need to sprint to class in the next like 20 minutes, um, I wanted to give you all an update as to where I am at Girls of Fate and Fury. I'm on page 184 in this book. I think I'm a little bit behind where I was supposed to be by yesterday. Um, I think I was supposed to get to page 213 to be on track to finish on Saturday, and I'm a little bit behind, but I'm gonna make it up today. Um, and so far the events of this book have been kind of building up to our final battle is how I can describe it. The prevailing plot point of this book is that Lei is trapped in the king's castle and the king has kind of taken her on as his like paper queen. He is doing the classic keep your friends close but your enemies even closer trope. So he's basically keeping her by his side every, every single day so that she can't plan to escape or kill him again. So Lei is stuck in the king's castle. The other paper girls from book one are still around and they're still in the castle as well, but I don't think that they're being concubines for the king right now. They're just kind of like, they have them all stuck in a room together. So they're all trying to plot how to get out of the castle. Um, there are a bunch of people inside the king's court that are working against him and working with Lei to try to get her to escape. And she actually had the opportunity to leave, but she didn't take it this time because uh, it would hurt the other paper girls. 
I love when this happens. So the king has shamans that are working for him in his court that are loyal to him and the shamans basically put this bangle or bracelet on Lei Zing and they also put it on Aoki who was another paper girl that was like totally in love with the king and she still is actually. So Aoki and uh, Lei are like not getting along because Lei is trying to get out and kill this king and Aoki is totally in love with him so that's a little bit awkward. Um, but the shamans that the king have um, basically weaved magic into these bracelets that if Lei does anything bad the bracelets constrict and it will cut off her hand and Aoki's hand so now she's like well I can't do anything to hurt Aoki because I'll do I'll put my life in danger I'll put my own life in danger but I will not hurt my friends so she's kind of stuck in a hard place there Meanwhile, Ren and her father's uh, allies and their army are also working towards trying to this, trying to take down the king from outside of the castle and also rescue Lei. Um, the plot that Ren's going through right now is a little bit complicated and I'm kind of struggling to understand some of the alliances and what this is all working towards. And I think that that's primarily because I didn't take the time to actually like read back from like book one or book two. However, what I am very clear about is that there will be a final battle, a final show off between, showdown between the king and his allies and Ren and Lei and all the other paper girls and their allies um, sometime soon. I'm nearing the 50% mark of this book, so we're getting close. Um, and I'm just gonna keep riding this wave and reading and seeing where this goes. But for now, that is the only update that I have and I need to skirt myself to glass. So I will talk to you all a little bit later. It's 4.40. Um, I just woke up from a nap. I had class until 3.30ish and 8 and I was asleep for a little bit and I just woke up with an email that like I'm both very excited about but also like... <laughs> so there's this saying or like idea in life where it's like if you have something that you're excited about like an opportunity or something that you're applying for you keep it to yourself until like, you know, there's an update or you're ready to share it. And I feel like I usually try to do that because you don't want to talk about something if it's not going to happen. That's how I feel. And in my previous reading vlogs, you all have seen me um, apply for my job and get my job, my current job. And I just feel like it would be fitting to continue this trend of sharing exciting news on my reading vlogs that don't have to do with reading but have to do with my life for me to look back on for my family that watches my videos over my winter break that just happened in december um i applied for a federal internship with the u.s fish and wildlife service and i really submitted the application pretty half-heartedly i honestly did not expect to hear much back from it. So I submitted the application and kind of put it out of my mind. I'm like, yeah, I submitted the application, whatever, but like nothing's gonna come of it, right? <laughs> I was wrong. My application moved on from the initial review of HR and it has been forwarded to a hiring manager. And I just got an email confirming that I have an interview for one of the projects that I applied for. <laughs> not me tearing up stop <laughs> this is like supposed to be a summer internship so if i were to get this i would have to like i guess move to washington state um over the summer to do this internship and like it's just i'm genuinely sitting here like in disbelief because i really did not expect to go any further in the process and here I am at stage two out of three. So I have to email my hiring manager back and confirm an interview date. That definitely won't be in this vlog. It's going to be later um, in January. Um, yeah, that's the life update for, you know, future me looking back at this and any family or friends that watch my videos. Um, that's my life update in this reading vlog. So we can now shift gears and go back to the reading aspect of this vlog. 
Okay, okay, completely moving on from the sappy, I'm almost crying life stuff happening right now. Let's talk a little bit more about Girls of Fate and Fury. So I am actually just now getting to where I should have been yesterday in the book. I'm on page 208 and things are about to go down. <laughs> I am on Ren's perspective at this part of the book. Um, I'll talk about Lei in just a second, but in Ren's point of view, um, the Hanos Allegiance um, Alliance are really turning to crap right now because the White Wing clan, which is the like bird demons, um, their leader, their clan leader, Lady Dunya, has just found out that Ren actually killed one of her daughters and the whole clan turned against them. They just lost a really key member in this fight and uh, Ren's dad is pissed at her. He's like, how did you let her find out that you're the one that killed her daughter? And basically Ren and her dad are kind of feuding because Ren's dad is playing this war really dirty actually. He's killing a lot of people that didn't need to die and aren't really the target of the rebellion, but um, he's kind of like anything goes in war and Ren is still reeling from her reaction, her the reaction that Lei had given her when um, in like previous books where she just like kept killing, kept sacrificing people and Lei had said, you know, how many more people have to die by your hands until you realize that you are just as bad as the people we're fighting against. And that has really stuck with Ren and now Ren is like trying to be more merciful, but her dad is like at all costs we're winning this, so there's some tension there happening. Meanwhile, the previous chapter with Lei was really short. It's basically just her getting ready to marry the Demon King and become the Paper Queen. She's just standing in, um, you know, the public figure of the Paper Queen, and that has also um, given the, rebel the rebellion has taken a hit because of that because now papers around the kingdom are like, oh, the Demon King is marrying a paper girl. Like maybe this means that we'll be treated better. Maybe this means that papers finally will have a better status in society. So maybe we shouldn't rebel against the king. So the rebellion is just taking a like, hit after hit right now. And it's really not serving either the girls well or any of the other supporting characters. So that's the tension of this book right now. I'm honestly probably going to have to do some overtime reading um, throughout the next two days to catch up because I currently need to do some assignments before I have a club meeting in about an hour and hopefully have some time tonight to sit down and catch up as to where I'm supposed to be in Girls of Fate Fury. So I will update you all when I have something more to say. <laughs> Friday, January 7th, it is the last day of the school work week and I just, I think I said this yesterday, but I feel like I have just been running this week so I'm very excited to have the weekend ahead of me and to edit this vlog and make it fun for you all. Um, so thanks for bearing with me if you made it this far. I am excited and also very nervous because I have just hit page 222 in Girls of Fate and Fury, which means I am at the 50% mark. I'm halfway. Um, I'm a little bit behind where I should have been yesterday. I actually didn't really get any reading done yesterday because I had assignments. I'm going to start with Ren's perspective by page 222 and let you all know what's going on. So now that the White Wing has abandoned them, they're kind of standing in the like town square that they had just took over from the king's army and they're standing there and they're just kind of taking in the carnage of the city and all of a sudden they look up and all of these flyers are falling to the ground and Ren picks up one of these flyers like what is this and she sees that it's one of the king's like propaganda posters basically announcing the wedding between the demon king and Lei Zing as their paper queen and she literally loses her mind. She goes into her she state and her dad's like, control yourself, Jesus Christ, Ren. And she's like, that is all I've been doing this entire time, dad. I'm freaking done controlling myself. So she kind of like totally loses it. So now Ren knows for sure that Lei is alive but being held captive in the king's castle and is being forced to marry the king and become a paper queen. And she loses her mind and she's like, I'm immediately gonna go save her. I have waited too long. So that's the end of Ren's chapter leading up to this point. She's on her way to the castle to save Lei and a couple of her allies as well. Meanwhile, inside the palace with Lei and the other paper girls, um, it is the eve of the Demon King and Paper Girl wedding and they do this exchange of gifts as a tradition to um, help celebrate and bless the marriage and the Demon King or the King and the 
queen to be are supposed to exchange five gifts each that each represent a different element the core elements of wood fire metal water and earth so those are the five gifts and um the maidens in the castle are getting lay all together all groomed and ready for this uh, gift exchange but also they are getting the other paper girls ready which is not normal because the other paper girls are there to only serve lay at this point that was part of the king's plot to having them there is to kind of like break the friendship by making the other paper girls kind of like hate lay um and so now the maids are also getting them dressed and ready for the ceremony. They're like, why are we going? And Lei is like, something is up. And of course something is up. Why would there not be something up? <laughs> so they all get dressed and they're shuttled off to this place where they're supposed to meet the king. And the king has shamans that have weaved magic to make the room that they're in look exactly like the place that Lei tried to kill the king about six months earlier. So she's like, oh this ain't good the plot is that each one of the girls represents the different elements that i just listed and the five gifts that the king has for lay is basically five sacrifices of her friends what a lame ass gift so lay is like panicking trying to save her friends and all of a sudden it has come to a head one of the mistresses that has been working like on the inside of the palace that is really loyal to Lei, she whips out these knives from under her like dress and she starts throwing knives and she's like get the girls and go so that is where we are it has finally picked up it's come to a head and now the king knows that there are insiders in his court and um i think it's just gonna keep getting more intense from here so that is where i am at page 222 i'm about to shut up and sit here and just like read as much as possible and see where it goes and see what reactions i have but i'm literally so scared <laughs> Oh no, I knew somebody was gonna die. Oh, that's sad. I knew it. I knew they weren't all gonna make it out of this. God damn it. No, god damn it. I don't want all these people to die. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'm so freaking sad right now. This is the problem when you care about all the characters in a book. Like, I don't want anybody to die. Oh my god, I'm sad. Oh my god! Why am I about to cry? I literally, I literally have tears in my eyes. No! <laughs> this is going on the Insta story right now. Because Natasha Dunn keeps killing me and I just have to keep sharing the burden. <laughs> That's the only way I'm going to make it through this. troubled by where I feel this is going. If any of you have read this book, you already know where it's going, but I want to ask somebody so bad, like, is it going to be bad? Like, uh... <laughs> I feel exactly like that TikTok where it's like me in like the past doing something cringy and then it's me now and it's the guy banging on the door it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sad. 
I don't want to keep as much as I want to finish this book I literally don't want to keep reading I don't want to keep reading because I don't want anything bad to happen that I hate it oh my god oh my god <laughs> I'm gonna cry my heart is beating so fast right now <sighs> and I just like have a feeling this isn't gonna go well for one of them one of the one of the girls it's gonna be either or. I just, it's gonna be either or. There's no way they both make it out. There's just no way, and I don't know who it's gonna be. I'm not ready. I am not ready. Oh my god, I actually want to cry right now. Whew. I gotta take a break. I am on page 317 out of 423, and I just need to take a break because I know the next time I sit and read, I'm just gonna finish it. I'm just gonna finish it because when there's a battle scene, you can't stop, like, you know? I'm gonna take a break, I'm going to do some chores um, and other stuff, and then when it's time, I'm just gonna sit down and finish it in one go, so. Alrighty, it's the final day of this vlog. It is Sunday. I am actually going to meet you in the same place that I was yesterday to go ahead and finish Girls of Fate and Furies. I got my peppermint tea in this mug that says talented, grateful, unstoppable, and I'm hoping to kind of channel that unstoppable part to the girls for this final part of this book. I'm just trying to make my physical atmosphere as calm as it can be, even though I'm not going to be calm after I finish reading this book. So. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. There's no way that's it, right? No, no, I, I'm on, th this is page 319, there's no way that's it, right? We're good, we're still good, we're still in this, it's fine. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good for the king. I am so anxious, oh my god. <laughs> I'm scared. This is about to be it. I am on page... 338 and Lei and Ren are about to go into the palace on their own because all the magic has been drained and it needs to be regenerated and Lei knows the palace inside out because she's been captive for the last couple months so they're gonna go on a stealth mission on their own. I have a prediction this is gonna go wrong because Ren's magic is completely drained and um, they were planning on using her magic to infiltrate the palace and she's like, maybe I should talk to my dad because this changes our plans. And Lei's like, no, you don't need your magic. He's only taught you to believe that you need your magic to be a good warrior. But you're a good warrior without your magic. And I'm like, it was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. <laughs> it strikes me now that Ren and I are truly on our own, yet it feels right in a way. We came to the palace alone, only to find each other. Now we'll destroy it on our own, the two of us, together, the whole way. No. Oh. It looks like it's gonna be a final showdown between Lei and the king. <laughs> she killed him! No way, no. I'm not done yet though. There's no way. Is the rest of this book a happy ending? Wait, wait. Were we given mercy? I think Lei just killed the king. He was already dying because Ren almost killed him. Did they actually win? Her last words to the king was, we beat you. Ugh, Natasha Nun does it again. I'm so nervous because this is ending well, but I don't trust it at this point. Oh, they want to turn the palace into a shelter for women. I think it is a happy ending. I, I think I'm accepted. It's a happy ending. 